I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and we are here today with the long-awaited review of the Kinetic Research Group X-Ray Chassis. Now, we've been working with Kinetic Research Group's chassis for quite some time now. We have one of the original Whiskey 3 chassis, and in the 2014 PRS series, we ran a Gen 3 Whiskey 3 chassis on our 260. Uh, it's worked incredibly well, but those chassis systems tend to be relatively expensive. Our Gen 3 is a folder, and that puts that chassis in excess of a thousand dollars and in reality that's just out of reach of some shooters so kinetic research group understanding this decided to bring in a lower cost chassis system and that is the x-ray right here now don't mistake lower cost to mean cheap or with less features the x-ray chassis actually comes with a ton of features and duplicates a lot of the functionality of the whiskey 3 chassis at a much lower price point how much lower price point well we're talking five hundred and $90 for the Remington 700 short action version of this chassis. Now it's available for both the short action and long action Remington 700 and the Tika T3 right now. Now what do we get for that price point? Because obviously you guys are thinking that well they cut that price down there has to be a lot that's missing from it and that's not really true. Uh, one of the ways that they cut the price point was with materials. Instead of machining all those really detailed pieces that you have on the Whiskey 3 chassis they use polymer pieces which can be molded for the x-ray. The key piece though is actually the same between the X-Ray and the Whiskey 3 chassis and that is the aluminum backbone that your action actually mounts into. Uh, that piece is the same, you get the same V-block mounting, uh, you get a very very wide recoil lug recess. Uh, we have a 3 tenths of an inch thick PTG lug. It's more than a quarter inch thick on this action and it drops right into this chassis with no machining at all. Uh, we also have a Timney 517 trigger on this one and again it drops in with no problem. Timney triggers are notorious for having that pin that comes out on the side and they interfere with the inlet on a lot of rifles. Uh, in our case both the 510 and the 517 drop right in with no issues at all. Because this uses a V-block bedding system, you don't need to glass bed this. There's no extra bedding to be done. You just simply drop your action in and torque it down to 65 inch pounds. Unlike some chassis systems out there where you have to take all kinds of stuff off the rifle, uh, both of your action screws are actually accessible uh, without removing anything from the chassis. So if you find yourself in a situation in the field where all of a sudden you have something jammed in there or something you have to remove the action from the chassis, uh, you can just drop those two bolts, pull the action out, uh, maintain it, drop it back in, torque it back to spec, and you're going to be good to go. Now, that is the similarities between the Whiskey 3 and the X-Ray. Now let's talk about some of the differences, and the main difference you can see back here. On the Whiskey 3 chassis, we have this really nice detailed aluminum buttstock with a lot of toolless features on it. Well, that was deleted for the X-Ray, and what we have here instead is we have a polymer buttstock. Now, the whole buttstock is polymer. There's not any aluminum bracing or anything in here, and they did an excellent job in designing this because this buttstock is extremely rigid. I really don't notice any movement, any wiggling at all when shooting the system. The buttstock is just as solid as can be. So they did, again, an excellent job there. They still maintain the toolless adjustable comb, so you've got about one inch of comb height that you can go up or down, and the cheek piece is still the same as the Whiskey 3 chassis. You have this asymmetric cheek piece here, so you can switch it around uh, to get different angles on the side of your face. So if you have a fatter face, then you can use one side. If you have a skinnier face, you can use the other side. And I find it's really nice just to get that last fine tune. And you can do that without having to have any extra mechanism to slide the cheek piece to one side or the other. Now don't worry if you do like the grippy cheek piece. Uh, you can use a grippy cheek piece on this. They do have the option to add that. But again, you have a thumb screw right here that you loosen up to get your elevation adjustments on your comb. 
The thumb screw cannot be switched to the opposite side. It's only on the right hand side unless you want to do some uh, drilling and some machining and stuff. Uh, guys have complained about this in the past, but really we've done support side shooting with this knob in here and it really hasn't gotten in the way. It doesn't bang my face at all. In fact, when I'm in position on the rifle, I can run my finger down my cheek and actually have plenty of room between my cheek and that thumb screw. So that's gonna be good to go. Now, if it really bothers you, you can go ahead and pull that thumb screw out and you can put a regular pan head screw or something in there uh, to take up that space. I'd use the thumb screw to get your adjustment first and then remove it. But really for me, it's not an issue at all. Now, as we come back here to the buttstock, another cost-saving feature was instead of having the toolless flip levers to adjust our length of pull like we do on the Whiskey 3, the X-Ray utilizes a tried-and-true spacer system. Really, there's nothing to go wrong here, and you can add as many spacers as you need to get the length of pull that you want. Uh, it's just a matter of screwing them in, and you're good to go. Now, before you add the spacers, you can loosen the screws and you can slide this whole butt pad assembly up or down to get it exactly where you want uh, for your shoulder pocket. So if you like to run this a little higher, you can loosen it up and you can run that butt pad up and get it even with the top of your comb like I like to run it. Uh, for some reason, this just actually felt right to me with it centered up. I usually run it a little higher, but in this case, it was good to go. We didn't have any problems with it. On the bottom of the buttstock here, we have this little bag rider attachment. It's also great to get up and lock your support hand into. Uh, if you don't want that, if you want to use a monopod, then this drops off and you can install one of the included Magpul Mo polymer rail sections. Uh, they will screw right into that spot and you'll be good to go. You also have a recess here that you can install a Magpul QD flush cup if you want. So if you have a QD sling, uh, you can drop one in. We actually have one installed on the left-hand side over here. Now coming forward, the pistol grip is exactly the same as the Whiskey 3 chassis. Uh, it feels the same when we drop it in here. It's got the same thumb ramps, which is one thing that I really, really like about these chassis. So when you drop in here and I get my hand position, it feels just like the Whiskey 3. I can run that bolt really quickly with that hand in that position and we are good to go. Uh, again, exactly the same between the X-Ray and the Whiskey 3 on the hand position. Uh, coming forward, the trigger guard is again the same as the Whiskey 3. They did a little bit different mag release on the x-ray uh, this is a looks to be a cast or a forged mag release whereas there's a little bit of machining detail on the whiskey 3's mag release and the mag release is one of the few problems that we ran into and i think it's an operator issue uh, when shooting prone in warm weather because we've had this for quite some time uh, I didn't have any problems with dislodging the magazine. It worked just great. When the cold weather set in and I started shooting with gloves, occasionally I would <coughs> dislodge the magazine while I was shooting. And I think what was happening is because this magazine release is swept backwards along the trigger guard, and I usually like to curl my fingers forward and support them on the front of the pistol grip, I think I was just coming forward and my gloves were bumping that magazine release. Um, we couldn't reproduce it in the shop. That mag is locked in there solid. I mean, I really can't yank the magazine out no matter how much wiggling I try. Uh, it is locked in there solid. So I think in some way, shape, or form, I was bumping that magazine release to get it to drop. Uh, if it continues to be an issue going forward, we may just swap it out with the same mag release that's on the Whiskey 3. Uh, so no problem there. Now we come up to one of our last major differences between the Whiskey 3 and the X-Ray chassis here, and that is the forend. And this forend, of course, is polymer instead of the machined aluminum that the Whiskey 3 chassis does. But you still get all of those mounting points on the bottom. You have all of these holes already drilled in here. And you can mount all the same accessories that you have for the Whiskey 3 on the x-ray. The only difference is whereas those accessories might have screwed right into the bottom of the Whiskey 3 handguard, 
on the forend of the x-ray, you actually have to remove it from the backbone and then you have to put in backing nuts so that the metal screws actually have something to bite into. Uh, metal screws can screw into just polymer threads, but it's really not a good thing for longevity. And if you were going to do something like put one of KRG's Manfrotto uh, tripod adapters on there, you wouldn't want to rely on just polymer threads to hold that in there. So the fact that we're running backing nuts on it and it won't be able to strip out or pull out easily is really that nice extra peace of mind. And it's one of those extra added details that I like about KRG. Now we come forward here, we are running a Magpul Mo rail section on the front and you do get a couple of rail sections included when you buy the chassis. And we run into one of the few uh, irritations that I have about this chassis system. And there is no real built-in forward sling mounting point. Uh, you get this recess in the back that you can put the QD in, but you don't have a recess in the front that you can do it. Um, ideally, I would run a spigot mount out here and I would run one of their flush cup mounts in the spigot mount just like I do on the Whiskey 3 that I compete with. Uh, since we didn't have that and we were actually trying to go with the minimum amount of weight on this rifle, uh, we put the rail section on the bottom and I put a Daniel Defense uh, flush cup mount on the back section of that rail so I can run a sling in the back and on the bottom of the rail and we'll be good to go with really the least amount of weight we could possibly go with. Now that is one of the biggest benefits of the X-Ray over the Whiskey 3 chassis system is weight. You lose almost a pound and a half of weight going with the polymer X-Ray chassis over the mostly aluminum Whiskey 3 chassis. And you really don't lose anything in the function department. In fact, some people that work in cold climates a lot may actually find that the X-Ray chassis is a better option than the Whiskey 3 chassis. That aluminum gets really cold and it can suck the heat right out of your hands uh, with aluminum chassis. Whereas with the polymer on here, uh, when we were shooting it uh, this last weekend at the Mammoth Sniper Challenge, uh, we didn't have any problems with the chassis being too cold to handle or sucking that heat out of your body. Now, speaking of the Mammoth Sniper Challenge, we actually were given an opportunity to test the durability of the X-Ray chassis at that competition. Uh, the first day, as soon as we stepped off, we had a rather long hike with all of our gear across berms and all over the place. And a lot of the berms that we were crossing were fairly steep. And when I say berms, I'm talking about the actual berms that you have bordering pistol and rifle ranges to use as backstops. Uh, one of the berms that we went over, I had the rifle loaded in an Everly Stock gunslinger, so it was actually in the scabbard, barreled down behind my back. Uh, we crested this uh, berm, started going down the other side, and I was about midway back in the pack. So there were a lot of other guys that had gone down and slid down that far side of the berm and loosened the soil up. Uh, when I came over it, I came down, I got about halfway down the berm and lost my footing and went straight down on my butt. When I went straight down on my butt, it speared the muzzle into the ground. Now the muzzle was covered by the gunslinger scabbard, so I didn't have to worry about actually damaging the muzzle or getting anything packed into the brake, but that put several hundred pounds of force through the barreled action into the chassis system. And I was a little bit worried about causing some kind of zero shift with that hard of a hit right on the front of the rifle. When we got done with that hike and we got to our first stage and we got on the rifle, I was happy to see that there was no perceptible zero shift at all. The rifle functioned exactly the way it was. So that V-block bedding system did its job. It held the action in and we didn't have any problems with anything banging or shifting around. Throughout the entire match, I really didn't have any problems with anything loosening up, anything coming loose on it at all. The uh, system worked just the way it needed to through a variety of different shooting scenarios. Uh, so there it was really, really nice. And it was nice to be able to have a lightweight system, uh, not have that extra pound and a half because really, you know, ounces turn into pounds, pounds turn into pain. So it's nice to be able to lighten up that system and uh, go relatively lightweight. Overall, I'm really impressed with this chassis system. Other than the magazine release, which again, I believe was a end user error, uh, it has just worked phenomenally for us. Um, I would like to put a spigot mount on here and get our sling mount 
pushed out further and get our bipod pushed out a little further. But again, that's just a configuration thing. All of the accessories that you can use on the Whiskey 3 will go on the x-ray to include the spigot and the night vision mount. So if you're a police department and you're looking to get a lower cost chassis option for your 700s, this is really a good option. Again, $590 versus the $900 plus dollars for the Whiskey 3 chassis really puts this in a competitive price point. Overall, we can definitely give this a thumbs up and we can recommend the X-Ray chassis system if you need a chassis system in that $600 price range. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you've liked this video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. If you want more information on the Kinetic Research Group X-Ray, check out Kinetic Research Group's website, which we'll leave in the description below, or check out our blog post for our web review on this chassis. Again, we'll leave that link down below. And until next time, get out and shoot!